Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, this is Dr. Garayas, uh, MED 120, Medical Terminology, and um, this is uh, my video quick lecture uh, for uh, tutoring purposes um, for our respiratory system. Now, when you look at your textbook, um, reading it verbatim is a great way to fall asleep. Um, what a, what's a better way to utilize your textbook is, uh, of course, also in conjunction with your medical language laboratory. Um, one way to utilize your textbook is, if you want to know what's important, look at your objectives. So we see here, we have, uh, we're going to do the respiratory uh, system, so treatment, structures, of course. And again, let's not delve into the respiratory system as an anatomy uh, class, but it kind of is in a way because you have to, um, you know, you have to be able to identify the uh, some of the, the parts and the functions. But we're going to do it in the context of do you understand the words and the word parts? And that uh, goes to the next objective, the word building. Okay? Uh, recognize, define, and pronunciations and spelling. Uh, you know, that comes as a, uh, comes as a uh, consequence. And... We're going to start inter introducing common abbreviations uh, because that is also part of the goals of this course. Now, here's a little disclaimer regarding abbreviations. Um, the Joint Commission doesn't like abbreviations too much because th sometimes they vary from facility to facility, but um, we still use them on a daily basis, especially uh, with respect to um, pharmacology and uh, prescription writing. And many of the electronic medical records um, uh, software, if you type in a, an abbreviation, a drop-down menu usually comes out asking you for clarification, and uh, you pick the, um, the most appropriate one, and uh, the electronic medical records software will write out the entire word. Okay? So that was my little commercial regarding uh, Jayco and uh, their views of um, the, the utilization of abbreviations. Now, all of these chapters always start out with the people in your neighborhood. So the Department of Pulmonology or the Department of Pulmonary Medicine, if you look at the term airy pertaining to, again, so that means the word pulmonary is an adjective. So you don't say things like, I had a pulmonary. That's like saying, I'm sitting on a blue. Um, it's a pulmonary what? Department of Pulmonary Medicine. And uh, the Department of Pulmonary Medicine or Pulmonology is part and parcel of the Department of Internal Medicine. So pulmonologists are subspecialists. They do time uh, in internal medicine and then do even more time uh, for uh, in pulmonology. And of course, their expertise is uh, the lungs and everything related. So things like asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and remember the term chronic, that means you had inflammation or infection of your bronch or your um, the, the lung tubes, and it's chronic, ick, pertaining to time. Uh, you had it for a while. Uh, I believe the cutoff is like uh, greater than six to eight weeks. So those are pulmonologists, okay? Now, the respiratory system is divided into upper respiratory and lower respiratory with your windpipe here which is your trachea as uh, the dividing point. So everything from this, the trachea on up, is your upper respiratory, uh, upper respiratory. And from the trachea on down, lower respiratory. Now, as a quick uh, preview uh, for your anatomy and physiology, the upper respiratory tract is, it's of concern uh, if you get an infection up there, also known as a URTI, upper respiratory tract infection versus, of course, lower respiratory, which is LRTI, lower respiratory tract infection. And the uh, items that we mentioned uh, just a couple of, uh, just not even 30 seconds ago, emphysema, bronchitis, pneumonia, those are serious, serious things. And those belong here in the lower respiratory tract. So when you get a letter from your doctor to your boss uh, stating that you have a URTI, upper respiratory tract infection. What are they talking about? Nose and your um, uh, sinus cavities, which are, uh, there's these pockets and holes inside your skull and your sinuses. So you could have rhinitis. 
inflammation and infection of your nose. You could have pharyngitis, inflammation and infection of your throat. And you can have laryngitis, inflammation and infection of your larynx or a voice box. Those things, they're annoying, they're, they're painful, but will you die? Odds are no. But all the other items that we talked about, lower respiratory tract infection, that's serious stuff. That's the stuff that you could be potentially admitted for. All right? So we're not really looking at this picture, but I, we just utilized this uh, picture um, uh, for context because, you know, I'm a visual person, and most people are. Uh, they like seeing the picture. Uh, but eventually, you're going to have to know this picture for your anatomy, physiology, and all the parts. So now uh, we're going to talk about bronchioles in a moment. But essentially, this is your trachea, and these are your main stem bronchus. Us, uh, structure of, uh, pertaining bronch, and remember uh, from uh, uh, our week three lecture, um, that uh, that was the tube that goes into the lungs. So you have a right one here and a left one here. And at the end of them, O, O-L-E, means very small. So they get smaller and smaller, like tree branches, until uh, the tubing of these uh, main stem bronchus becomes bronchioles. And at the end of them, you have these um, grape-like sacs called alveoli. Uh, in Latin, alveoli means uh, grapes. So it looks like a sack of grapes. And here's where you have gas exchange. We, uh, we inhale oxygen, and then we exhale a byproduct uh, of our metabolism, carbon dioxide. So let's, let's look at some words. Okay? Um... Here, of course, wonderful list of combining forms, and here's some words, and you can see they're already broken down. And um, if you, like, I'm not too good at reading these phonetic spellings, but if you want to practice the way to speak and the way to uh, enunciate proper medical terms, you could write out the term in uh, Google, and then there's this little speaker a button and you could click on that button and it will tell you know uh, it'll tell you in a normal voice how to say these words so this word is ad adenoidectomy let's look at the word adenoid first we can chop off we can chop but uh, separate adenoid into adin and oid adin means gland oid means resembling so it's not really a gland it's just something that looks like a gland uh, and your adenoids are part and parcel of your immune system um, and, um, and your lymph nodes and your lymph vessels. So sometimes they get super, super infected. Therefore, we have to do perform an ectomy, a surgical excision. Excision means to do what? Cut out. What do we do with our X's? We cut them out. So an adenoidectomy, excision of the adenoids, and the adenoids are these gland-like structures. It doesn't mean that it's a gland. Another popular term using the suffix oid, mucoid. It looks like mucus, but it isn't. Okay? Lipoid. It looks like uh, lipid or fat, but it isn't. Okay? Now, larynx, we already uh, discussed that. Uh, laryngitis, inflammation or infection of your voice box. And one way we can diagnose that, and visually inspecting it, we utilize um, an actual instrument, which is your laryngoscope. Now, laryngoscopy is what you schedule. Laryngoscope is what you clean and get ready for the doctor to use, and specifically the pulmonologist. Another, other people who use laryngoscopes, not only pulmonology, not only internal medicine, but ENT. Uh, which is ears, nose, and throat, also known as otorhinolaryngology, which is yet another subspecialty of the Department of Internal Medicine. Nasorhino looks, looks like a beautiful both A and B question. What combining for means nose, naso. So nasal al pertaining to your, your nose or the nasal passages, right? Rhino, rhinorrhea. 
watery discharge. Rhea is not normal flow. Rhea is what? An overflowing. So if you got a lot of post-nasal drip, you know, it's like dripping out of your nose already, that's considered rhinorrhea. Pharynx, throat. Now, if you looked at my notes, the pharynx and larynx, I put them together because they're so close. Pharynx is your throat. Larynx is your voice box. Two entirely different structures. You get pharyngitis, you have a sore throat. You get laryngitis, you get aphonia. A, meaning no or not. Phone, meaning speaking. Ia, state or condition. So laryngitis, you can get aphonia. Pharyngitis, you know, uh, it's a sore throat. You'll have a hard time swallowing, but you could still talk. Now, your tonsils are also part and parcel of your immune system because your mouth is a very, very dirty place bacteria-wise, okay? Um, so if I'm looking at the peritonsillar area, let's break this down. AR is the suffix, peri is the prefix, and of course, the root, tonsil. So pertaining to, peri means surrounding, what? Your tonsils. So you could have peritonsillar redness, peritonsillar pus, peritonsillar necrosis. And if you remember necrosis from the notes, osis, abnormal condition of death. That means dead and dying tissue that isn't supposed to be dying. Next word, trachea. Trachea is your also known as your windpipe. So if I'm performing a tracheostomy, what am I performing? I am because I'm forming an opening or a mouth. Tracheotomy, right, if I take out this S, that means I'm cutting into your trachea. Two entirely different things, even though they're related, but it could be a potential tricky question. And those are all your upper respiratory tract um, uh, terms for this particular chapter. And remember, the beauty of this video is, if you believe I'm going fast, and I feel like I'm going a little fast, it's okay. You can pause it, rewind. All righty. Next one. Do, 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 do. Lower respiratory tract. So alveolar, pertaining to the alveoli. Remember we showed you those sacs of grapes? So if you have alveolitis, okay, which is part and parcel of your bronchitis, how much trouble you're in? That's a, that's a serious thing versus... Your upper respiratory tract infection, like a pharyngitis, it's not as serious because the alveoli is where the gas exchange takes place. So if that has a functiolacia or inflammation process going on there, uh, you're going to have a really hard time breathing. Bronchiectasis. Now, that's different from bronchitis. Bronchitis, inflammation or infection of the bronchus or the structure of the uh, tubes that go into my lungs. Bronchiectasis, in bronchitis, your, uh, your, your bronchioles and your alveoli get smaller. They start constricting. But in bronchiectasis, the exact opposite happens, and they puff up. In either situation, remember we talked about normal? We can't have uh, air in our lungs really, really tight, nor can we have air or space in our lungs really, really loose. In both situations, my patient will have difficulty breathing. And if you can see there, bronchiectasis, damaging effects, long-standing infection, bronchiectasis, um, uh, usually the cause of emphysema. The cause of emphysema is usually chronic smoking. Oh, um, by the way, side note, um, if you want to answer any... Uh, any question regarding smoking and cancer, it's all of the above. Smoking causes everything. So uh, d there's super, super linkage between uh, chronic um, cigarette smoke and tobacco smoke and chew, you know, you chew tobacco, uh, to uh, cancers. Bronchiole, remember, ole, that means the tube means really small. So if you have an artery, it's a normal-sized artery, but an arteriole is a very small artery. A bronchus is the larger tubes that go into your lungs. The bronchiole are the smaller tubes embedded way deep inside your lungs. You could also have a veins. That's another tube in your body. And uh, a small vein is a venule. So if I have bronchiolitis, 
that's ah, really bad. I already have inflammation or infection of my bronchioles. Now, there's coverings in all of your organs, and your lungs is no exception. Uh, that's called the pleura. So if you have pleurisy, uh, and what's pleurisy? Pleurisy is, a, you know, when you have a really bad cough, and every time you cough, it feels like there's a knife running all over your sternum. It's because the covering of your lungs are infected, and there's nerves in there, and it causes pain. So if you have a pleuri uh, what they call a pleuritic pain or pleuritic rub, it means itic means pertaining to. It is a adjective saying that the cause is your pleura or the coverings of your lungs. A pleuritic pathology is a, um, a disease state covering your lungs. And what's next? Your lungs. Okay. Pneumo means air or lung. So a pneumonectomy. Uh, pneumectomy, you'll hear those two types of words uh, being thrown around. That means uh, uh, we remove a piece of your lung, or all of it, and we can do that. Pneumonia, state or condition of what? Air. Now, pneumonia can be caused by a whole bunch of things, but it essentially it is a really bad inflammation and infection, and what we already know about inflammation and infection, it brings a lot of tissue fluid. And remember, your lungs have to be in the middle. They can't be dry, nor can they be wet. Pneumonia is a situation where your lungs are wet. You're pretty much drowning in your own tissue fluid. And uh, being a former patient uh, uh, with the diagnosis of pneumonia twice in my life, it is not fun. It's very, very difficult to breathe and very painful. Lung, pulmonologist, we already know, logist, specialist, Pulmon, lung, or air. Thoraco. Thoraco is your chest cavity, right? Uh, you know, everything behind your ribs. So if I have a thoracopathy, pathy, process of disease, remember the why, you can think process. Thoracopathy is the process of disease, okay? So those are beautiful upper and lower respiratory uh, tract um, combining forms. Right here, you have the lovely combining form. And remember, the combining form is the root accompanied with a combining vowel. And the combining vowel, 95% of the time, is an O. So let's now look at some of the suffixes. Suffices, or suffixes. They're the uh, parts in N, uh, N parts of medical terms. So we already know about pleura and pleurisy, right? Pleuritic. Well, let's talk about pleuralgia. Alja means pain. So pleuralgia is I now have pain in my pleura, and odds are uh, it's probably due to pleurisy, the thing that we talked about, you know, when you get a really bad cough. Thoracodynia, that also is, that's not pain in the pleura, but it's pain in the chest. Ectasis, we already went over in bronchiectasis. Atelectasis is another term uh, regarding the... Um, the overexpansion of, uh, oh, wait, wait, whoops, my bad, uh, atelectasis, the overexpansion and then eventual collapse of your alveoli. So it gets really big and puffy, and just like a balloon that bursts, it collapses. And you'll learn later when you're in your pathology class exactly how it does that. Osis, we've seen a couple of times already, means abnormal condition. Abnormal, if we break down that word, it's al pertaining to Ab, away from, norm, which is the rule. So the rule is, I should not look like a dead person. If I'm Caucasian, I shouldn't look pasty or white as this table. Well, the table that is in, the, uh, in our classroom, right? So uh, cyanosis. And if you're a person of color, you're going to look grayish, okay? So that's cyanosis. That's an abnormal bluish discoloration or grayish discoloration. Anosmia, that's smell. So if my patient has really bad sinusitis, really bad uh, um, uh, nasal congestion, will they be able to smell anything? Nope. And you will have anosmia. If you can't smell anything, can you taste anything? Nope as well. Uh, you will learn in anatomy and physiology that... Um, Eating is a multi-sensory uh, sensory, um, uh, event. You require your sense of smell and your sense of taste. 
um, uh, you know, you, you know that classic scene when you're trying to eat, drink some, eat or drink some medicine that's nasty. What do you do? You hold your nose. Hypoxia. Uh, hypo means low or under or deficient, and oxia, state of condition of oxygenation. So if my patient is having a low respiratory tract infection, they could potentially have hypoxia. And we don't want to get to that level because we already know that oxygen is one of our major fuels in our body, and without it, we cannot live. Uh, phagia means eating. So aerophagia, aero air, uh, it's, um, it's a term um, a lot of times also associated with like newborns. It's, uh, you know, they're sucking, in, they're sucking in air, and that's not good. And then they could get gassy and uh, irritable. Apnea is stator, uh, goes, uh, stator condition of A, without or no breathing. Uh, and typically, uh, if, if you have sleep apnea, those are those people, you know, they snore a lot and they probably have some sort of blockage in their nasal passage. Um, and, you know, they, uh, they're very, very loud. And you can hear them. They're snoring like that, very, very loud. And then you'll hear what? You'll hear nothing. And that's the apnea part. And these patients, they wake up very, very tired because typically you should be deep breathing and uh, when, when you sleep, you should be taking in a, a, a decent amount of oxygen. But people with sleep apnea, they don't take a lot. So even if they slept a good four or five hours, um... Uh, they wake up very, very tired. Spasm, a pharyngospasm. Now, a spasm is muscles are controlled by your brain, which controls a nerve, which controls your muscles to contract or to move. And sometimes there's a little glitch in the, si in the system and in the signal, and then you get a spasm. Okay? Now, when this happens in your pharynx, that's not good because, you know, it causes you to, uh, to choke a little bit, and, uh, and that's not fun. You can get it with meds. You can get it. It could also be a sign and a symptom of um, uh, of a neurologic problem. Pyothorax. We we recall what pyo is. Pyo is pus. Pus is the aftermath of your white blood cells and bacteria doing battle. And in any battle, uh, there are corpses, and that's what pus is. And that's why you got to get rid of it. And if you have pyothorax, you have pus in your thorax or you have pneumo, pneumopyothorax, you have pus in your lungs, we got to stick a needle in you, and we have to drain it out. Okay? And those were uh, your suffixes for your pulmonary. And if you look here, there's a lot of little exercises you could do along with your medical language lab, and that's how you utilize your textbook. Here's another nice uh, uh, picture of your paranasal sinuses. All around your head, you have uh, these cavities or these holes, and you have them around your nose, so that's your uh, nasal sinuses, right? And you also have them all around your face and your forehead and your temple area, and uh, those are your paranasal sinuses. Para means alongside, and you know when you get sinusitis, those fill up with water or pus, and your, fe your head feels very, very heavy, like a bowling ball. Uh, and you know, especially when you get, um, you know, a, a drastic haircut, uh, your your head feels so much lighter. It doesn't take much fluid to make your head feel like it's made out of granite. And again, it's all it, it it's very annoying to the patient. It's difficult for the patient. But if that happens, will the patient die? Odds are no. Okay, more exercises. Here's a lovely picture that you could use for your future anatomy and physiology classes. Let's see. Here's more practice. And do you notice it's all the words that, uh, that were shown here, right? Again, more practice. Let's. Oh, here's another one. Tracheostomy. Stomy, stoma. You're creating a what? A hole. But in order for me to create that hole, 
I had to perform a tracheotomy. So I cut into, right? I didn't cut anything out. And then I performed the trachea stomy to put the stoma, which is this in. Okay? And we use that with um, all tracheal pathologies like, like throat cancer and things of that matter. Okay, pneumonectomy, right? Ectomy, I am removing a piece. So if you have lung cancer or tuberculosis, right, I could take this piece and I can remove it. And that is a pneumonectomy. A lobectomy is when I take a remove an entire lobe of your lung. These are called lobes, these sections here. Your right one has three, and your left one has two. Here's one, two, and here's your right one, one, two, three. And remember, you're looking at your patient, so this is your patient's right, and this is your patient's left. Sleep apnea. Many people have um, uh, a CPAP machine, which stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. So it, it puts a positive airway pressure here, and so that, and you can see, it's usually due to some sort of obstruction. We eventually, uh, uh, we go in there, cut all that obstruction out, or there's an obstruction up here in your nasal passages, right? And then that's why they snore, because if the airway isn't clear, you'll, you'll hear <laughs> really horrible sounds. Oh, I love telling you the story about how I stu uh, stuck the needle in the wrong side. Well, it's because why? I can't tell the difference between my left and my right. Now, when you're looking at your patient from their uh, posterior or from their back, where's their right now? This is their right. Now, this is their left. And you can see pleural effusion. Effusion is any fluid that shouldn't be there. And here's your pleura or your... Um, uh, right here, here's the inside part of the lining, and here's the outside part of the lining, and in between, got all that pus and fluid because this person has a lung infection, and then we have to drain it out. Here's your diaphragm. It's the thin layer of muscle right here. It's uh, one of your major muscles of respiration. Here's another picture of chronic bronchitis. You could see the XX mucus. You could see the lumen here, and this bronchus is going to start to close up. Ooh, let's now go into abbreviations. And which abbreviations I like are common, and which I'm like, eh, don't really see them too much. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. Mm. I'm even. I'm not even that sleepy, yet. and I'm yawning. Hmm, sorry about that. Excuse me. So ABG, arterial blood gas. It is a blood test where I get blood out of your artery, and I look for the gases. And the two main gases that I'm looking at is O2, oxygen, and CO2, carbon dioxide. O2 is uh, is our fuel. Carbon dioxide. That's our waste product. AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Now, the word syndrome, drome means to run. Sin is the same. So all these confluences of signs and symptoms that a person with HIV has when they transition to full-blown AIDS, the, all of those are due to one thing, the human it goes immunodeficiency virus or HIV. So that's why they syndrome run together. ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. It is something that happens overnight, and uh, your patient uh, can't breathe. And like uh, the typical story is, they wake up late at night. Uh, it just happened. They didn't really have a cold or anything like that. And ARDS is also serious because it it progresses. C, capital C, capital A. Uh, we, I don't, I've never seen it for chronological age or cardiac arrest. I always see it for cancer, carcinoma. Oma, tumor, carcin, cancerous. CF, cystic fibrosis. Abnormal condition of creating fibers. 
and um, the fibers are really, uh, uh, they're cystic and pussy, so they gum everything up, especially in the lungs. And if you've got a ton of um, um, fibers and pus in your lungs and mucus in your lungs, it becomes very, very difficult to breathe. And it holds in infection. So these uh, patients, um, they're immunocompromised. Be careful. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's chronic, means it happens what? A long time. Obstructive, um, there will be things that block your lungs. Pulmonary, of course, pertaining to your lungs. Now, the two uh, quick examples of COPD is emphysema and chronic bronchitis. CT is a computed or computerized tomography. We already learned that word. Graphy, process of. Tomo means area or location. And of course, it's, it's, essentially, it's essentially a machine and a computer that zaps your body with multiple, um, like multiple rays of x-rays, and then the computer puts it together uh, um, like a puzzle. Uh, diphtheria, and it's a diagnosis we already know, capital D, little x. You already know EEG. It goes endotracheal tube. Uh, they call, um, uh, I don't know, I've heard it called ET tube, uh, uh, but not ETT. So what's an endotracheal tube? It's a tube that I'm going to put endo inside. Inside what? Your trachea or your windpipe. Force vital capacity, very common. It's one of your uh, lung volumes. HCO3, also very common. That's bicarbonate. Okay? That is um, uh, uh, that is a buffer or a chemical that if you're too acidic, um, it, it kind of brings you back into uh, neutral. HF, heart failure, yeah, sometimes. Medic magnetic resonance imaging, yep, that's a good one. Uh, NMT... A nebulized mistreatment, eh, sometimes. OSA, no. But this is really common. PCO2, PACO2, PCO2. Every time you see a P in front of O2 or CO2, it means partial pressures. The pressure of these gases that are in your arteries. Like PA in your arteries. See that little A? PCP, very common with... Um, uh, full-blown AIDS patients, they get pneumocystis carinae pneumonia. It's very, very dangerous. It's very infectious. And you got it. Odds are, nine times out of ten, you have AIDS, full-blown AIDS. And it is an awful way to die. PE, I don't, I've never heard pulmonary embolism called PE. PE is usually referred to your physical examination. PFT, pulmonary function test, that's when you blow into that uh, little uh, machine. Um, there's this little machine, and you blow into it, and it measures your lung volumes. pH is how much acidic or how much basic you are. Acid is one side of the spectrum. Alkaline or basic is the other side of the spectrum. And human beings have to be within physiologic pH, which is in the middle at pH 7. PSG, nah, SAT, yeah, we say SAT all the time. So if you say O2 SAT, that means the oxygen saturation within your blood. O2 SAT should be anywhere from like 90, 97% and above. That means what? 97% of your blood is saturated with, the, uh, with oxygen. SIDS, not a common thing, but, you know, uh, you've heard it before, sudden infant death syndrome. Uh, we really don't know the cause, but I believe it most likely is a stop codon in their genetics. Um, you know, somewhere in their genetics it just says the baby most likely will not progress and the baby will die. Um, some postulate it's like uh, maybe immature lung function or uh, combined with the way the baby sleeps. That's why... You really shouldn't let the baby sleep on their stomach, um, just you know, just as a precaution. SOB is shortness of breath, also known as dyspnea, nia breathing, dys abnormal breathing, right? And TB, of course, tuberculosis. 
So um, know your abbreviations because definitely they're going to come out when we start doing cases. Now, if you look at the bottom, uh, oh, look, there's even more um, uh, extra diseases and conditions. Acidosis, abnormal condition of being acidic. Remember, uh, human beings should be where? pH 7, they shouldn't be acid, which is less than pH 7. So you go through these, there's, uh, there's uh, some nice extra words, ep like epistaxis. That is uh, the medical term for nosebleeds. Pleural fusion, pneumothorax. It means what? There is extra air in my lungs that shouldn't be, and then what happens? Your lung will collapse, and you'll learn more about that in your anatomy and physiology class. Bronchoscopy, we already kind of know. We're going to look into your lungs, bronco, through the tubes of your lungs. CT, MRI, spirometry, that is a form of pulmonary function test. Now, a PFT is, uh, the, the formal one is done on like a machine about the size of a laptop, and you breathe into it. But spirometry, that's that little, why am I trying to explain it? Let me just show you what a spirometer looks like. Well, here's the formal big one, but uh, like it's a machine and you blow into it and it, it analyzes all your lung volumes. But there's also another spirometer is the uh, where is it? This thing, right? This is your in, uh, incentive spirometer. This is supposed to train your lungs, uh, especially if you have lung pathology, and also post-surgery because after surgery, how well do you breathe? And we don't want you to get pneumonia. So you got to practice this, and you got to do it like every other, every four hours, and at three times get your best score uh, if any of you have ever been to the hospital and, and, and saw this. Here is polysomnography. Somnol somnolence means to sleep, so this is a sleep study. You go to sleep, we measure uh, uh, the airway through your nose, and we hook up uh, an EEG to your head to see if there's any odd waves in your brain. Oh, here's the spirometry, right? And then it's a machine, and it uh, tells you lung functions. I believe Falls Church has one. I'm not quite sure if it's working or not. Endotracheal intubation. Endotrache means within my what? Trachea, a windpipe. And this is when you scope somebody or you trach somebody. You tube somebody. There's a lot, whole bunch of uh, uh, slang terms. But what you do, you stick this blade in there. It puts the tongue out of the way. And then you put this intubation tube so you can open up an airway. And then there's this little syringe that blows up this bubble here. So it closes it off. And we tape it. Uh, 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 we tape it um, onto their face so it doesn't go anywhere. And that is an endotracheal intubation. It's fun doing that. And actually, these little blades have these little lights so you can see. Look at medication bronchodilators. What would that do to your lung tubes? It'll make your if you dilate your lung tubes, it will open it up. Steroids, mucolytic. Mucolytic is a drug that will lysis, mucolysis or mucolysis. What a mucolytic drug will do? What it will break down uh, your mucus. Now that might not be a good idea uh, because we need our mucus and we need to cough. But you know that that is out there. Nebulizer. Here is a what they call a puffer, but it is an inhaler. It's different from a nebulizer. A nebulizer connects it to the machine, and then you have your drug here, and then it um, makes an aerosol of your uh, of your drug. And it's a similar it's in a similar fashion. And here your inhalers here. Uh, many times uh, it's like a semi dry powder like medication. 
All righty. Now we go on to uh, the cases. Now, we're not going to go into the cases now, but after or from week five onward, we're going to go back to this and we're going to look at the cases and essentially um, look at what are the significant words and how, what do they mean in context. The cool thing, what your textbook does is, looky here, it writes it down for you so you can look them up. And it has these wonderful questions that almost match the kind of questions that I would be asking. And if you're doing your medical language lab, when you guys do your li listening exercises, this is kind of what they do. You take a history or listen to your patient, and then your attending will ask you certain questions. What surgery did the patient have? What time? What was the outcome? It goes, are there any other related symptoms? What did you, it goes, what did you see when the nasal, it goes, what did they see upon physical examination with your nasal mucosa? And who are the people in your neighborhood? What physician was doing the talking? What physician do we need to talk to? Is there anybody, it goes, is there any other specialist that we need to go see after we get a diagnosis? Okay, because remember, the diagnosis is a state or condition of complete or thorough knowledge. Here's another pulmonary function report, and as you can see here, ABG, really important to know the carbon dioxide, right? It goes, and the oxygen saturation, your bicarbonate, and of course your pH, right? And just like the other one, gives you some keywords, some key questions that I could easily turn into multiple choice examinations. All righty. I think that's it. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you in class.